So the Jacksonville Jaguars have had a bunch of turnover on their entire 53-man roster. You got the front seven that was complete, completely rebuilt on that defensive side. Devin Lloyd, Foye Luke, and Foley Fatakasi, all of those guys joined the front seven on the defensive front seven. Now you've got the offense, you know, Zay Jones, Christian Kirk, Evan Ingram, the return of Christian or Travis Etienne, excuse me, a bunch of turnover across the starting roster. So I figured no one else better than to bring Jersey Jaguar on to talk to me about it. What's going on, man? What's going on, man? I'm happy to be here talking some Jags football. Hey, absolutely. You know, obviously, whenever you're talking about any roster, the number one position you need to talk about is the quarterback position. I personally have the Jaguars carrying two quarterbacks going into uh, training camp and then into week one. Obviously, Trevor Lawrence, super healthy rookie year, you know, opposed to like someone like Joe Burrow that had his knees folded in on himself, unfortunately. But Trevor Lawrence, super healthy. And obviously, he no one's ever going to hope that he repeats that 12 touchdown, 17 interception season. But with C.J. Beathard following behind him, you know, he completed 100% of his passes last year in 2021. Two of two for, I think it was like 30 yards. You can't knock that. He's a great veteran backup. What do you, how many quarterbacks do you think the Jaguars are going to carry forward? Uh, probably only two. I can't imagine they keep more than two. Um, I know a lot of people – when we all saw the news that C.J. Beathard went down during practice, a lot of people were saying, please, football gods, bring us back Blake Bortles. But uh, it's not meant to be. It's not happening. Um, they may try to store like Cody Kessler on the uh, – or not Cody Kessler. Um, E.J. Perry? Uh, no. Um, Jake Luton. I'm sorry. Oh, rooting for Luton, baby. They they may try to uh, <laughs> they may try to throw him on the practice squad, uh, but game day it's just going to be Trevor and uh, CJ. I could I couldn't agree more. You know the the running back position is a position for me that I feel like if they hadn't drafted Snoop Connor could be a position that's up in the air for that third spot. But obviously you've got Snoop Connor that scored what twenty six touchdowns in I think three years at uh, at Ole Miss. James Robinson's the former all uh, thousand yard rusher. Travis Etienne, obviously the all time uh, ACC rushing leader. There's no real argument for them carrying those three onto the roster. I think when the real argument starts for the uh, Jaguars carrying maybe a potential fourth, kind of starts with like a Nathan Cottrell someone that you want to have is that third while James Robinson isn't on the roster. You know, he's going to probably be on the puck. He's probably going to be on the IR probably till week six. I believe that's when they can first activate uh, players on the IR, but ultimately I really don't see them needing to carry a fourth running back due to the fact that there's other positions that absolutely have players that are probably going to get snatched off a practice squad, probably snatched off that last cut if they aren't kept on the roster. So ultimately, I think Nathan Cottrell is going to get kind of that short end of the stick where he's just like, well, there's better players than you. Unfortunately, you're going to become a great member of the Jaguars practice squad. But I have three. How many do you have joining the roster? Um, oh, yeah, it's it's tricky because I I really like what I saw out of Ron's Armstead. Mm -hmm. um, I believe he's still under contract. Could be wrong, but I believe he is. Um, coming off of COVID and everything that he put up with, um, sitting out the 2021 – or, I'm sorry, the 2020 season, um, I thought the little bit that we saw of him last year, I was pretty impressed with him for the most part. Um, I Before we drafted Snoop Connor, I was more than fine with him being the third guy behind Robinson and ETN. Um, but I'm – Again, it really does come down to J-Rob's health, but I'll just assume that he'll be available. So I'll take the same route that you did, only instead of Nate Contrell on the practice squad, I'll put uh, I'll put Rock Armstead. Cool, cool, cool. I do think I think I think that's one of the more heated positions that we're going to see is that you know potential yeah. fourth running back spot. You know, everyone likes to talk about the offensive line, which we'll get to, but it's really. That running back spot is one that I think is going to be a very quiet, big competition going forward. But the running, or excuse me, the wide receiver room, you know, I think that is one that is 
as much as solidified as you can probably have of a group. I think the only other group that's that solidified is probably the safety room. When you talk about the front names in it, you know, Christian Kirk, Marvin Jones, LaVisca Chanel, Laquan Treadwell, and Jamal Agnew. Those are all six names that you think are absolutely going to be on the starting roster. And like I mentioned, the fact that there's going to be a guy that makes this roster because he would not survive on the practice squad. I think that man is Kevin Austin. You know, I do. I I try not to get myself wrapped up because last year I got myself wrapped up into the Jeff Cotton the hype yeah. train, like the oh my god he's making all these great catches in week four of the preseason you know oh my goodness jeff cotton dude never took a real snap in the nfl so uh, ultimately you know going before training camp i think kevin austin i do think if you know they cut him right now he'd get picked up and i think he'd be a very hot commodity to get picked up but mm. Going forward, I think once we get to the uh, end of summer, into the fall, I do think Kevin Austin is going to be that seventh option. Christian Kirk, Zay Jones, very easy keeps. Marvin Jones, he's unless he's trade bait, I don't see him leading the team. LaVisca Chenault, unless he's trade bait, I don't see him leaving the team. Laquan Treadwell is a cool fifth to have on the team. And Jamal Agnew is a great returner, and he offers so much more than just a pass-catching ability. So I've got him carrying seven wide receivers going forward, you know, bringing my total roster to 12 at this point, where do you have the Jaguars with the wide receivers? Um, so I don't, I don't disagree with anything you said. I mean, the same, I would have the same opinion except for, I mean, and preseason really will be telling about this when it comes to Kevin Austin. Yes. Nothing else except for Kevin Austin. If Kevin Austin does nothing in the preseason the well, Jags are gonna cut him yeah and then it'll be you know if he goes on and he is great for another team I just hope it's not an AFC South team exactly and that's, that's all I have to say about it um but you know what if he has an Alan Hearns rookie year type preseason or we're like oh my god this undrafted dude's like making all these plays it's preseason the game's making all these plays and the transition to the regular season then, you know, just throw him on the practice squad, or do you say, you know, Laquan Treadwell, thank you for coming, because mm-hmm. I think of those six guys, because um, I still have not a, maybe not a whole lot, but I still do have a little bit of faith in Visca that he can turn it around. Um, so of all those six guys that I think are guaranteed to be on the roster, I think Treadwell is the most expendable. So I think, I think that if Kevin Austin does, you know, if him and CJ Beathard are lighting up the preseason, then, you know, I could see him making the roster, but to play it safe. uh, So I'll I'll say six. I'll, I'll just go with six. Yeah. Six for Jersey Jaguar. That's the first deviation we've had between the two. I've got 11 so far on the roster. You've got, excuse me, I've got 12. You've got 11. Now, for the tight ends, I think I do think there's going to be a huge differential here between this group. I, obviously, you have two huge front runners. I have four. I have four tight ends on the Jaguar starting 53. I have you know Evan Ingram, Dan Arnold, Chris Manhurts, and Luke Farrell. I think that's going to be a, probably a big point of contention. But they did invest the draft pick in him just last year, and I can't really see him not being on the roster. I would hate to, you know, see him kind of just get booted like the Jaguars booted Quincy Williams. And now he's a starter for the Jets. He's a, you know, an 80 plus tackle guy for the Jets. I'd hate to see that happen once again, where, you know, Josh Oliver gets booted, whatever he's, you know, the fourth, whatever tight end in in Baltimore, we got a seventh round pick for him. I'd hate to see Luke Farrell become the Quincy Williams. I don't care if he becomes the Josh Oliver. I care if he becomes the Quincy Williams. Right. And that's honestly the reason I'm keeping him on the roster is because God forbid he does develop into something and he develops into something nice. And I'd hate to see anyone develop into something not on this roster that was on this roster that we could have had. So that's honestly my biggest reason for keeping Farrell. Obviously man hurts is one of the greatest blocking tight ends in the league right now. Dan Arnold had a, I think it was like every single uh, year this uh, in his career, he's had a plus 95 passer rating when targeted Evan Ingram is the most athletic quarterback or excuse me tight end the Jaguars have had since 
a very young Mercedes Lewis, but where do you have the Jaguars? Way back. End? Uh, man. See, I guess maybe it might come down to how spiteful does Trent Baalke want to be because Luke Farrell was like a buddy-buddy pick for Urban Meyer. Yeah. We all seen the video like, you know, oh, I, you know, I told your dad we were going to pick your whatever. He said something in that goofy yeah, little so like, like yeah. he was, it was the same thing like with the Carlos Hyde signing in free agency. Like, oh, it's one of Urban's buddies. Let's bring him in. Right. So I – Oh, man, like, you know what? Since I only went six, six receiver, I'll say he makes the roster. I assume he just for special teams. We got we got four tight ends making the team, five or six wide receivers. Excuse me, fifteen total for Jersey Jaguar, sixteen total for me thus far. Now, this is – I honestly feel like this probably is going to be a very easy portion of this uh, of this breakdown right now. It's the offensive line. For me, my starting five would be Cam Robinson, Ben Barch, Luke Fortner, Brandon Sheriff, and Walker Little. With Jawan Taylor as the swing, jo- uh, Tyler Shatley as the – you know, and then Will Richardson as the both replacement guards. You know, Tyler Shatley's played uh, tackle position in an in emergency, but – Ultimately, Jawan Taylor is a bad right tackle, but he's better at guard than Tyler Shatley is. And Will Richardson's just a, you know, in case of emergency, break glass, eight man on the depth chart. You know, you've got two guys that have, could have been first round picks. You know, you have three second round picks on this dra- uh, on this line, and one guy that is graded out as a rookie, uh, previously being the third best center according to pro football focus with Luke Fortner. I love bringing that up because it's like a guy coming out of Kentucky should not be the third best center in the national or it should be in college football, but he was. So I bring it up every chance I get, give the man his due. So ultimately I have eight going forward. Where do you see this offensive line? Let's see. Let's go from left to right. We got cam. We got, and again, I really think, This is one of those things where preseason will be a teller. But as of right now, I'll put Barch at left guard. Um, I got Fortner in there at center. And then, um, obviously, Brandon Sheriff at the other guard. And then I do believe, ultimately, that um, Walker Little will win that right tackle position. Um, I think, you know – would it be better for the Jaguars if Jawan Taylor step, steps it up and has such a good camp and such a good preseason and plays so well that it forces Walker Little to kick in the guard? Or if Jawan Taylor kicks in the guard to replace Ben Barch, you know, maybe we'll see because I would hate for, for Jawan Taylor to ultimately go to waste as a, a high second round pick, but as it stands right now, I think that's the reality the Jaguars are facing. Um, so outside of those starting five, obviously Jawan Taylor is going to make the team. Will Richardson is, like you said, break glass in case of emergency, and he can kind of play all over the, mm-hmm. all over the field. Um, and then um, Tyler Shatley, the backup center king. Exactly. Um, yes. Exactly. I, I honestly, I couldn't agree more, you know, and it's really weird too, because that right, uh, right tackle spot, the left guard spot are two that are just, there are the two spots that are open. In my opinion, I don't think the center is of much contention. You know, you can, you can, you can play your trumpet all you want about the center being a spot of contention, but Luke Fortner is the starting center for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm going to, until week one in DC, I'm going to be saying that Luke Fortner is the center for the Jaguars. Tyler Shatley is a backup. He has been a backup his whole career. He is going to continue to be a backup. If he was good enough to be a center, he would be on a different team. I yeah. don't. I can't, I can't imagine you would have a a quality starting center playing behind a quality starting center. Some someone in the league would have noticed that and thought of him as a quality guard talent, as a quality center talent. He's not. That's why he's still in Jacksonville. That's why he's been a career Jaguar as a backup. So Luke Fortner is the starting center for the Jaguars. But 
I could be wrong, but if I am, I'll eat my words. If I'm not, hey. No, I think I, I think it's probably as of right now, like 75, 25 mm-hmm. that Fortner will. And the only reason I give Shatley the 25 is, you know, what if it's what if it's so close between the two and Barch is like sucking it up in preseason and Doug I almost said Doug Marino, this is close. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and Doug Peterson says, you know what, Luke, like we're going to kick you over to left guard just to start it out because he played guard and center in, in college. So that's yeah. the flexibility there. But I would say barring, you know, everyone's healthy and Ben Barge is in a total swinging door at that guard position it's much more likely than not because this regime has no holdings to Tyler Shatley. He's just the depth guy. To any of uh, them. Yeah. So I don't think you're, I don't think you're far off. I think if everything is smooth sailing and training camp and preseason, it's more likely than not that he's the opening day center. Which is weird for me because it's like, I see people on Twitter sometimes saying that, you know, Tyler Shatley is the center and it's like, okay, so who's going to play left guard? Well, it's either Fortner or Barch. Well, so then you're admitting that the Jaguars made a bad pick with either Fortner or Barch. If you're if if Fortner is not going to be the starting center and he's not going to be the starting left guard, it was a bad pick. If Barch oh, no. is not going to be the starting guard, yeah. it was a bad pick. The yeah. way that it works out, I mean, Shally was undrafted. Will Richardson, bottom end of the draft. Taylor, if okay, I'm willing to write off that he was a bad pick, but from two regimes ago. Two head coaches go. He was the pick. So, you know, with Fortner and Barch, it seems like almost give them their due, give them their tryout at that spot because that's where you you drafted them high enough to where if they aren't starting, if they aren't playing, especially Barch, what is this, year three for him? If he's not starting at this point, there is something wrong and you have to start the conversation about it being a bad pick. Well, Barch is what, a fourth-round pick? I believe so. Out of a out of a D three school, so I mean that gives him the the leeway to be you know, oh man, yeah. you a bunch of pressures in year one. Okay, got better in year two. Let's see year three. Yeah, no, I don't think. I mean, if anyone says that Fortner shouldn't be starting at either guard or center, they're they're just wrong. I mean, he he the only way that he won't is if he gets hurt. Honestly, that's so he will be week week one against Washington. He will be on the field in some way, shape, or form. But the thing that really bothers me is um in the event that if he weren't to win the right tackle job, Walker Little has to be on the field. Yes. You have to like offensive line is the most intriguing part really of this entire team to me of what's gonna be like because if you're not playing Walker Little in some way, shape, or form, that is a catastrophic disaster of a pick. Like, you could have had Pat Fryermuth. You know, you could have had whatever. Like, you need him on the field in some way, shape, or form. And if he can't beat out Jawan Taylor, which I think more than likely he will, but if he can't, big issues. Big issues. But Now, here – let me, let me throw this at you real quick while we're on the topic of offensive line. I guess we've kind of, you know, we've been talking about the offensive line for a minute. Um, Brandon Scherf is someone that's had a lot of history with injury troubles. You know, he's been an all pro when he's healthy. He's been a pro bowler when he's even played half a season. He's been that good. Would you rather Fortner kick out to right guard or would you rather play Shatley in the spot? If in the event that Scherf does go down, would you rather have the bona fide good guard playing in the right guard spot or would you rather have the you know the six man up playing in that guard spot oh well see if you want if you want Fortner to be your long term like if you want in Trevor Lawrence's you know six seventh eight year for him to still be taking snaps from Fortner like if that is your ultimate vision you can't be, you know, okay, this week you're a guard, next week you're the center. Okay, Tyler Shatley, there's no future in Tyler Shatley. Honestly, I wouldn't even be opposed if in the event of that happening if they plugged Will Richardson into that guard. 
position. Now, would that be ideal? No, no. I wouldn't want that. No. But, you know, I would be definitely more prone to putting Tyler Shatley in that, in that guard position because he can play guard. Yeah. And I, I would be much more, much more prone to do that because if you, you know, you invested the first pick in the third round, which isn't chunk change. You invested a lot in Fortner. If you want him to be Trevor's guy and you really want to do everything you can for Trevor and have Luke Fortner build that reputation with him, Mm -hmm. can't be flip-flopping him. So now that we've talked about the, you know, the Jaguars offense, you know, what the starters are going to look like for that offense, let's talk about the defense. Obviously, that front seven, like I talked about, is one that had a massive overhaul, and you really can't start that conversation without what you have in that front, you know, honestly, that front three and what is going to be Mike Caldwell's three, four defense. You know, I honestly, I have them carrying seven defensive linemen. I have them carrying three nose tackles, maybe, you know, because they have that option to go out into the big ends, but I do think they're going to carry probably about four big ends. Roy Robertson, Harris, Adam Gotsis, Dewan Smoot, Malcolm Brown to be your big ends. And then obviously Fuller runs through Fatakasi, Foley Fatakasi is arguably one of the best nose tackles in the National Football League. Devon Hamilton, who's continuing to develop. And then Jay Tufele, who is just, he's just a guy. And he's probably the seventh one I'd put out of this group of seven. But how many defensive linemen do you have the Jaguars carrying forward? Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, let's go through it. We got starting at nose tackle, Devon Hamilton, uh, Jay Tufele. Um, Fatukasi, sorry, I'm having a total brain fart right now. Can't Where think of name. Um, Adam Gossis, Dewan Smoot, Malcolm Brown, um, Roy Robertson Harris. And then, I mean, I know they're technically, you know, like linebackers, but they play def- defensive linemen. So I'm going to throw just, just how my brain works. I'm going to throw Josh Allen and, um, um, Caleb on chase on because they mostly they mostly rush the passer so I'm kind of in my brain I'm grouping them all together even though I know their title might say outside linebacker so that's uh nine I think I have you got nine going forward we got 32 for Jersey Jaguar so far I believe I'm at actually 30 I believe I'm actually at 32 as well I think the one I think you uh took one more defensive lineman and I took one more defense or excuse me wide receivers i think we're actually uh nodded back up here oh i'm sorry i forgot arden key so all right we got 33 now let me go ahead and update my uh, my track <laughs> so we got wow okay so yeah but for me for the linebackers i kind of i lumped in three i basically lumped in all the pass rushers with the outside linebackers that's what they're going to be Fun yeah. books are they're going to be linebackers. You know, Trayvon Walker is someone that I think has insane potential with it, just his athleticism. I remember that there's that highlight of him where he, he fakes rushes the passer and then he immediately drops back and he runs with the running back that comes out of the backfield and breaks up the pass. The, the athleticism out of this group is absurd. It's, I, you know, I have eight linebackers total, four of them are pass rushers, and I, Three of them, I have very good confidence that they can eclipse six sacks. The other one being Caleb on chase on who, if he can make, make it to six games without having been told where to go, it's good for him. If he can line up correctly six times, if he makes it even to six snaps, good for him. Because what if Caleb on chase on can make a Dwan smooth type third year leap, that will be astronomical for this football team. If he can I'm make not- four sacks, it'd be astronomical. <laughs> I'm not going to hold my breath, no. but any kind of significant advancement and improvement from Chase on this year would be, would be huge. How much, weight do you, how much weight do you put into the fact of how young he is? Nothing. He, he's not even 23 yet. I believe he's not even 23. Uh, and he's been in the, this is going to be his third year in the league. I believe he was drafted when he was 20 years old. <clears throat> Honestly with him, like he's like, you, you see the videos on Twitter where like him standing next to Trayvon, Trayvon Walker and it's like he looks like he could just pick him up and throw him across the yard like 
Caleb on chase on is just too, he's too skinny. He's too small, you know, like, you know, tackles just have to really get their hands on him and there there's nothing because there's no weight to him, you know? And I mean, so I, I don't know. I kind of, I mean, yeah, I didn't know he was that young. I didn't realize that. So he's still a young guy. Maybe, um, I almost said Dave Caldwell, my goodness. Maybe Mike Caldwell can get the best out of him. Um, but that's all we've got. We've got this hope that it's because he's so young. We're Jaguar fans. That's all we know is hope and hope, hope. and potential. Hope. Hope. I feel like I've been oh. – I, I remember whenever – I so a little quick anecdote here. I remember uh, for a long time my dad and I – you know, I wasn't a season ticket holder for a long time. I lived in Jacksonville. I'd go to games when, you know, my parents bought me tickets basically. And I think it was like a, you know, a preseason game or it was just a, you know, run-of-the-mill game we were going to. And I remember there was this drunk guy that was leaving the fairgrounds parking lot. You know, if you're familiar with the Jaguar Stadium, there's the fairgrounds parking lot and the tailgate area that leads right into the stadium – right along the practice field. Well, my dad and I are walking, thinking nothing of it. Well, this drunk guy starts going off. This asshole shot con. He sold me on the three-year plan that they were going to be good. Meanwhile, this is like halfway through Blake Bortles rookie contract. And I just couldn't feel, but I couldn't feel anything but sad for the guy that decided about <laughs> three years worth of season tickets off the hope and prayer that Shad Khan would turn things around. Like looking back on his track record, it was just like, I could not agree more with the guy that he sold us this lie of hope and excitement that this team would be good. What did he buy? The, I was in junior high when he bought the team and I've been out of high school for four years or six years now. I joined the, yeah. Like yeah. So he well, said, this, this will be the hottest ticket or in the market or whatever yes. he held up as he stood in front of an old logo helmet. Yeah. I, yeah. All right. We're on to happy topics. Sorry. I just had to get that quick little bit of that random drunk guy from the fairgrounds that popped into my head, but the inside, but I, I will cool. say that um, it's more likely than not that both Dewan Smoot and Arden key have more sacks than chase on. Oh, if but, I had to put a thousand dollars on that, I would do it in a heartbeat. Yeah. On the over under, I would absolutely. Yep, and I want to be wrong about that because at some point, like you, like you want to start winning. Like I, <clears throat> I won't name any names, but I did hear. I was listening to um, something on YouTube, and I heard someone who's a Jaguar fan. He made made the comment that. Um, you know, well, the Jaguars, we don't need Caleb on chase on to be a high sack guy. We don't, that's not really what we need him to do. Yeah, it is. Yeah. He's a pass yeah, rusher, first round pass rusher. You spend the 20, yeah. You spend the 20th overall pick on a guy like eventually, like it's that kind of mentality and that kind of personality that leads you to where we are today. Yeah. You spend the 20th overall pick on a pass rusher. I need you to rush the pass. Or I need you to do it effectively. Because Lord knows you don't do anything else against the run. At least Trayvon He's Walker, if he comes in and has six sacks, it's like, well, you know, he got 15, six, you know, 17 tackles for loss. You know, he made a bunch of impact plays in the backfield against the run. Yeah, well, I well, Trayvon Trayvon Walker, didn't do that. He's, yeah, he's big enough to where even if he doesn't, it, it, you know, God forbid, even if he never develops as a real pass rusher, he will definitely hold up, you know, his own the line of scrimmage and he'll he'll set the edge for the for Devin Lloyd and Muma, um, if nothing else. And it, I feel I feel that. bad talking about the fact that there's a first round pass rusher, you know, that the Jaguars got for Jalen Ramsey, who is arguably one of the greatest cornerbacks of this generation of football. They got a pass rusher with one of the picks they traded for him. And there is a linebacker on this team right now, an interior linebacker that is arguably going to have potentially more sacks <laughs> than he is than the pass rusher that they got for Jalen Ramsey. And the I fact that I haven't said Devin Lloyd or Foyer looking, but the question is up there of which one am I talking about answers the question. Exactly. Both Foyer looking and Devin Lloyd have the potential to have more sacks than Caleb on chase on the guy that is, that's his only job. 
He's there to be a pass rusher, but there's two interior linebackers that have the potential to have more sacks than him. If he didn't have the dead cap money associated with him, he'd be gone yesterday. Devin Lloyd by Thanksgiving will have double Caleb on Chase on his career sacks. I don't know. You, you heard it here first. <laughs> Doubt that at all. But while we're talking about the interior linebackers here, I got four. I think it's a pretty quick and easy uh, group right here. Foye Luke and Devin Lloyd, Chad Muma, Shaq Quarterman. You know, three of these guys were brought in this year alone. Shaq Quarterman is an, he's a developmental guy. If he, you know, it's kind of just like the Will Richardson, Tyler Shatley, break glass in case of emergency. You're going to get, you know, 50 tackles out of him if he plays the majority of the year, but he's not. So you're going to have Foya Luke and Devin Lloyd. Hopefully both are going to be 100 tackle guys this year. Chad Muma, if he if he flirts with 60, 70, great. Shaq Quarterman, I honestly hope he doesn't see the field personally. But where are you at with these interior linebackers? Uh, exactly the same. Um, unless there's – because, you know, there's always like – there's always like a signing off of someone else's practice squad or something that takes place after preseason. Yeah. Um, but I am thinking that I'm not, no other names are coming to me. Pause. So I'm, I'm going to go with the same four. All right. Now the corners here, this is a big, big, big group for me. I didn't think I'd be carrying this many corners into this season. Obviously, you know, OTA just ended, so obviously a bunch is subject to change. But I have seven corners going into uh, training Ooh. camp. Yeah. Uh, I have Shaq Griffin, Tyson Campbell, Darius Williams, Trey Herndon, who are probably the easy three, or excuse me, the easy four. You know, those are easy. But uh, Chris Claybrooks, Gregory Jr., and Monterey Buster Brown, ultimately – you know, Chris Claybrooks, what he offers in the special teams is something that I think is going to potentially keep him on this roster. He's an incredible just speed asset to have. And then Buster Brown is someone that, you know, he's played safety in high school. And when you look at, you know, previous dual position players, you think about like Antoine Randall L playing quarterback. You think about that versatility they have and that God forbid break glass in case of emergency kind of player that we've been talking about here is because let's be honest, they're a team that won four games in two years. They need just quality players at all across the position. So he has that versatility to play corner, as you know, maybe your sixth corner, and then also a, God forbid, you need a safety. And obviously, I don't think you spend the draft capital on them if you don't think they have a position on the team as well. And Mm -hmm. otherwise, you just give rid of the pick. I don't, you know, it would make no sense to take a player They'd be like, well, three months later, we really don't actually like him. So thanks for coming. See you later. So I yeah. have seven. Where do you see this uh, quarterback room at? Uh, oh, okay. So we got Shaq Griffin, Tyson Campbell, Williams, Trey Herndon. I've Is the hesitation Claybrook's making the roster? A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. I I guess because of the special teams, yeah. I'll give it, I'll give it to him. And then I think of the two corners that we drafted at the end. I'll say I'll say one makes the one makes the 53, one makes practice squad. Okay. So six so six corners? Six corners. Which one that is, I don't know. Yeah. But Doug Peterson will tell us in the near future. <laughs> so what is what does that put me at right now? You are at 47 right now with safeties and special teams to go. You have okay. Okay. I think it's pretty reasonable. I think I'm honestly in the same boat as well. I, I want to say. Yeah, I believe we're both. If I believe we're both actually uh, right at forty-seven. Please. Yeah, you uh, you're carrying one more. Um, I don't know what you're carrying one more of because I have one more. Right, anyway, we'll figure it out later. I'll have, I'll have a running count on the screen. 
but uh you know for safeties it's it's this is the group that does not have any change which is weird you know you think about the quarterbacks and the uh, safeties which might be the only two rooms that do not have a new player potentially making a push for a starting spot or any spot on the roster really you know you got Rayshon Jenkins Andre Cisco Andrew Wingard and Daniel Thomas which is crazy to think that we probably bash the hell out of that safety room in 2021. And here we are talking about the fact that that room is probably going to stay the exact same. You're just going to move pieces around. Andre Cisco is going to be the starter. And he, my blind grandmother could have told me that Andre Cisco should have been playing safety over Andrew Wingard. Andrew Wingard's yeah, yeah. great in special teams. Great. Play him in special teams. You don't need to have him on the field on defense. Chris Claybrooks is great on special teams. You know what he's not doing? Playing on defense. So Rajon Jenkins is mediocre and pedestrian as he is. Hopefully, you know, the play of the other uh, four main pieces on the, uh, in the, in the secondary, you know, Shaq Griffin, uh, Andre Cisco, or not Andre Cisco, Shaq, uh, Shaq Griffin, Tyson Campbell, Darius Williams, Andre Cisco. Hopefully they elevate William or Jenkins play, but eh, for me, they're the four, sa- they're the four safeties and that's exactly what they are. They're just the four safeties. Yep. I mean, honestly, I would have been fine with them just cutting bait with Wingard um, and just having Dane. I I really like what I've seen out of Daniel Thomas, the little bit that I have seen. Um, And honestly, I don't want Andrew Wingard anywhere on my team anymore. But whatever. (laughs) I guess if he provides that special teams help, then – he for he, he'll forever just be on this roster, I guess. No matter who's in charge, who's running the ship, he'll just always be on the team. That is the uh, level of Jaguars purgatory. Andrew Wingard. Pretty much. <laughs> it's not it's not four wins. It's Andrew Wingard. We're gonna win six to six, six to nine games, but Andrew Wingard will consistently be on this roster, and he will consistently make business decisions not to tackle Derrick Henry and Jonathan Taylor. Yeah critical moments of the game just pull on up there and yeah um so let's see that puts me at 51 51 okay well then uh you got logan cook doing double duty here kicking field goals and uh punting (laughs) well you know what i just thought i didn't leave room for the long snapper yeah somebody on the special teams unit's getting bumped Mm. Man. I guess, oh, you know what? I guess I'll cut <laughs> just for, just for laughs. I'll cut Chris Claybrooks. Understandable. And uh, I'll have, uh, I'll have Agnew be the return guy full time. Beautiful. And then, uh, if if needed, Daniel Thomas can come in and, and cover someone. There you go. Who do you That's have? My kick, who do you have kicking field goals? Do you have anyone in particular? Do you think there's a front runner right now? Um, uh, Brandon Mavis, I believe his name is. Okay. Um, I think there's two guys in the competition right now. I've got Ryan uh, Sanchoso. So. Yeah, I've been I've been really and I feel like a terrible. I know, oh, Jersey Jaguar doesn't know what he's talking about, but like I kicker in June. Yeah, like I I know there's two guys competing for it, but I honestly don't even know their names. And yeah. I come talk to me in August about it. I don't know. Well, for context, Josh Scoby, his rookie year was in a kicking competition. Can anyone Larry. name the kicker he was in competition with? No, not to no. save my life. No, exactly. Like, it, who cares who, about a kicking competition through the summer? They're the kicker. I mean, kickers are like running backs or like a dime a dozen. They're more the dime a dozen. The last guy we had that boomed three 50-yard field goals in London was an accountant. He was I living see. in Orlando, Florida, halfway through the season. He gets a call from Trent Balky. Hey, hey, Matthew, would you like to join the Jacksonville Jaguars? Yeah, Trent, why not? And he moves to London and kicks three 50-yard field goals, win the game. Kickers, you're a kicker. Come on now. I'm not going to care about a kicker in July. I don't know why they cut him. I don't either. That's a great like, – I, I, I mean, 
yeah. not that he was like great or anything. No, but like, bad. why wouldn't you at least keep him in there for camp? You know, like, but are you really going to tell Ryan Santoso is better kicker than Matthew Wright? Yeah, like, I, yeah. How many? Uh, raise a hands in the comments. How many people have heard of Ryan Santoso? Andrew Melvis before is Andrew Brandon. I don't even know what his name is. Oh, was it Andrew? I don't know. Yeah, it shows how much I yeah, know. Melvis or Santoso. Raise your hand in the comments if you've heard of those people before prior to the Jaguar signing them. You know, how many people if I literally if I gave if I walked through the streets of any major city in this country and I said, Can you name 10 starting NFL kickers? Zero people would answer me. Honestly, I don't know if I could do that. I don't think I could name 10 starting NFL kickers. <laughs> and it's like, I would probably have to go to like NFL network. Could yeah. you 10 starting NFL kickers? And it would still be a like question of the day, like best kickers of all time, most promising kickers. And it'd be a eight minute segment, you know, with Adam Vinatieri as the special guest host talking about his favorite <laughs> kickers. Um, <laughs> We've spent way too much time talking about kickers. I feel like I've said more a kicker more times in this like eight minutes. Jaguars. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I feel like Doug Peterson, I, I feel like Ryan Santoso could walk up to Doug Peterson and be like, hey coach, my leg hurts. And he'd be like, I don't care. You're not a you're not a member of my team. Be like, who are you? <laughs> yeah, who are you? And Trent, hey, hey, Doug, that's the guy we signed last three weeks. It's like, shut up. Oh my God. I'm sorry, you do a better Trent impression than I do. I just make my voice semi raspy. But well, I try my best with my Trent bulky when I, you know, when I talk like him. Exactly, man. But thank you so much for coming on, man. I <laughs> truly do appreciate it. It's been a great time. I've loved talking to you. I hopefully, hopefully, our random uh, conversations about the random positions that we decided to diverge into a deep conversation about entertained all the incredible listeners. Obviously, check you out at what is it at Brian DeHart ninety eight. Am I correct on that? Uh, ninety nine. Ninety nine. I was one off. Yeah, that's my handle on Twitter. But if you just look up like Jersey Jaguar, you'll you'll find me. Find me on YouTube, all that good stuff. And if you're still listening to this video, still watching all the way to the end, you're a, you're a good soul. So check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe and go Jaguars. How about them Jags? Come on, Joe! Ah! Thank you, baby! Thank you! You make your blood come from my damn mouth!